Let's get one thing out of the way really quick. I'm not gonna be objective about this weapon, okay? Not because I don't want to, it's just that I physically cannot. I love this thing. This is a part of Warframe history. This is Warframe heritage. This is the Tigris Prime. And today, my friends, we're gonna revisit this outstanding primary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, something that a more casual Tano can treat as a jumping off point. But fret not, my friends, we also got the end game set up. We got Prime mods, Galvanized mods, we got a Riven, we're gonna be taking this one to Steel Path and see what it's capable of in 2022. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tigris Prime. Let's begin by having a quick look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Tigris Prime is a double barrel shotgun, old school style, and it has one of the rarest trigger systems in Warframe, the duplex trigger system. Now what the hell does duplex trigger system even mean? Well this, it's gonna empty both of the barrels in rapid succession upon your enemy. And of course the accuracy isn't all that fantastic, let's take a look at the 15 meter test really quick. Again, it's a shotgun, it's made to be used up close and personal, but even so, accuracy isn't really all that bad. Now the duplex trigger system can be used in rapid succession as you saw or what you can do is hold your trigger finger pressed down like so. Unloading a single barrel, roll around, yeah I'm gonna do things and then I'm gonna do stuff and then unload the second one when you lift off the trigger. And that's pretty much it. So considering the power of these shells you wanna go one for you, one for you essentially. And that's pretty much it. The reload is a tad on the lengthy side considering you only got two shots and the recoil, well it's a shotgun, what do you expect? Honestly, I was expecting more than that. But let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60, and if your comes with a measly 30 out of 30, you jump to actions, you plug in that Oroking Catalyst and you double your mod capacity. Is it worth it though on the Tigris Prime? <laughs> Well, my friends, honestly, it used to be a whole lot more popular than it is right now. It still packs a punch. I guess you're gonna have to wait until the end to make a call for yourself. If you're looking for one of the best single target weapons in the game, this is not it. More on the best single target in the game weapon later. Now my weapon has been Forma a total of six times, but this is not a Forma heavy weapon. For the weapon build I'm recommending you, you can go to free Forma something of the sort. But do unlock the weapon XL slot and make sure you Forma it to a V polarity for galvanized acceleration. Haha, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Now you might say, what do I need this for, dude? Fall off, oh, that's right. The fall off, my friends, because with this one, your fall off gets a whole lot better. The thing is, though, you shouldn't really use this one past 15 meters anyway because of the accuracy, so there you go. Again, galvanized acceleration, best in slot in this case. If you don't like the accuracy and you want to make it a bit, just a bit more accurate, consider the barrel, which is narrow. Now, accuracy on this one is going to be 9.1, which is, you know... Shotgun, it's fine. Fall off between 10 and 20, but we will mod for that to make it a bit better because we don't want to lose any of that yummy damage. The fire rate is 2. Well, yeah. Magazine of 2, multi shot of 8 by default. That means 8 pellets out of a single slug, which is absolutely fantastic. Noise alarming, reload of 1.8, which again, it might seem like, dude, it's a quick reload. It's not because it's just 2 shells, so it's a dead lengthy for 2 shells. Riven Dispo, 3 out of 5. <laughs> For several years, the Tigris Prime had a Riven Disposition of nada, only 1 out of 5. It was that popular, especially in Index. But times do change, and again, the trigger is duplex. Let's see the stats on critical chance and status chance. You get 10%. Ah, that's bad. Okay, it's simply what it is. Critical chance at 10% is not fantastic, even if you go with something like, let's say, what is it? Critical D and deceleration with 200%, you only get the 30. Let's make one thing very, very clear from the start. If you must have a critical build with Hunter Munitions, you can do so. It is somewhat workable, but it's not something I would recommend simply because I'm tired of the bloody thing over and over again. For this one, we're gonna maximize its status chance because the status per projectile is gonna be 11.3 per each and every single pellet striking the target, yes? As for the damage, you got impact and puncture and a whole lot of slash, my friends. Slash is gonna be proc priority number one. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at a standard build, shall we? 
Now this is your introductory level build. You got damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber and vigilante armaments. Critical chance, critical damage, nada. But instead we're going to be using sweeping serration to further increase the proc priority of slash. And of course when you slash, you gotta apply some vital to your target with frigid blast and toxic barrage. Toxic barrage is a 60-60 toxin mod. All 60-60 toxin mods can be farmed from corrupted vor in the void. It's very simple to farm and these on the trade chat go for about 10 plat give or take at least on pc frigid blast spy missions scattering inferno spy missions because this well these two for the most part are your option slot you can plug into these whatever you feel comfortable with for example people love this mod because they like the idea of blaze blaze fantastic 60 percent damage and 60 percent heat dude that's a whole lot of damage and you might say go like so instead of, instead of scattering inferno nah, nah. I want my status chance to be even higher, so in this case, I'm gonna be going with Scattering Inferno. Going with Blaze is not a bad idea, it's not a quote-unquote mistake, you can go with it, it will be fine. Punch in the Fru, fantastic idea. Which one you should go for? Well, you can go for something like Seeking Force, it's not a bad idea, 2.1 meters. But on this shotgun, historically speaking, a whole lot of people have been using Seeking, seeking Fury. 1.2 meters for the worth of punch, which isn't as big as Seeking Force, but you also get a 15% reload speed, right? So it's also a good idea, for example, you can slop it in instead of Vigilante Armaments or Shotgun Savvy with a 90% status chance. Again, it's entirely up to you. Here's one more option. If you're gonna be using this one super close range and you're not intimidated by adding even more flat damage because up until level 200 flat damage is still the way to go in the frame of the war, you can go with something like Vicious Spread, 90% damage is like point blank, it increases the spread, but again, if you're using it close range, it won't really matter. Now, let's test out the weapon like so on the Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120 as per usual. And let's see what the weapon can do with normal average everyday mods. Now, depending on how lucky you are with your procs, it can kill from a single shot. And if not, it won't. But as you can see, it basically devastates the target. You get vital procs, you get heat procs, you get 16 slashes on that. Yeah, that's 16 slashes, 7 heats and 2 vitals. Beautiful. You can achieve the one shot even with normal average everyday mods. Will it happen every time? No. It will happen roughly 20 to 30% of the time if my Excel sheets are still what they used to be. So there you go. It still performs quite well with normal average everyday mods. It's not what it used to be. But on the other hand, it's not like I'm using the best mods on this build. These are common, easy to obtain average everyday mods. If you're more of a... Oh, that's a one shot. If you're more of a veteran player, you should have access to galvanized mods, prime mods, even a ribbon. And now, considering that the disposition is up to free, we can make the weapon a whole lot more powerful than this. So let's do that. You should treat this build as a jumping off point. Something you should have as a base and then work towards something like this. Prime point blank, prime cleanse. Oh, yes, I know. It's a faction mod. We're going to be using it here because considering we can't really leverage critical chance and critical damage, we're going to go like so. We got to leverage this multiplier. Again, a critical build on it works, especially if you're going to be using bonus critical effects like uh, Arcane Avenger or Kavat buff. You can go that route if you're not tired of bloody hunter munitions on everything. Galvanized Savvy, single target weapon. Fantastic. Galvanized Hell, Tigris, Physican. Now, some of you might be curious, all right, which is the best Tigris Riven? And that really depends on which way you want to go. If you want to go for the same old critical chance approach, even though at 10%, I don't really recommend it. You, of course, you go with critical damage, critical chance, multi-shot. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. If you want to go for the status route, which is this route for sweeping serration, you got to have multi-shot. Multi-shot is non-negotiable. doesn't matter which way you go. You got to go with multi-shot. Then you might want to consider an element. If you get an element, then you cannot mod for it. You get how that one works. Flat damage is also not bad. Well, it's not bad until super high levels, because considering how much damage I have from this one and this one, I'm not getting a huge benefit anymore. And Galvanized Savvy too, and Primary Merciless. So the amount of flat damage here is absolutely sky high. You have another option to build a weapon for straight corrosive damage and just go for the big bada boom impact, as well as something like Primary Deadhead in that case. But from my testing, it was simply not really all that rewarding and fantastic to play. Level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goons again. Now let's see the difference. The difference will be actually quite sky high. We're gonna have to get a kill or two for the galvanized mods. Single shot on the target. And I don't mean one, two. I mean we're using the duplex trigger system right now to put a single shell into these targets. Take a look at that. Almost died for the initial impact. Look at that. Didn't even get the proc from a single shell. That is quite 
powerful. And of course, if you double unload, <laughs> double un I don't know, I'm horrible, I'm sorry. If you double unload on your targets, you're absolutely gonna blast them to kingdom come. Of course, there's gonna be a big difference when you use Galvanized mod, Prime mod, or Riven, etc, etc. This reminds me of the old Tigris Prime that was able to cut through essentially everything without any issue whatsoever. The golden days. Now, of course, shooting standing still targets is not exactly sportsmanlike, so let's head on over to the path of steel. Welcome to the void, my friends. Now, let's see what the old Tigris can do against these level 130-ish steel path corrupted. Now, I'm gonna make use of the duplex trigger system to its fullest extent. So, shoot one guy like so, then wait for the other guy, shoot the other guy like so. Obviously, I'm getting stacks because this is a uh, galvanized setup, and as you can see, the slashes are absolutely fantastic, clearing house. I'll be honest with you, playing with the duplex trigger system isn't all it's cracked up to be. Sometimes it can definitely be annoying, but it can also be highly satisfying, just like in the case of those double poachers and all whatnot. As for the performance of the weapon, well, I don't know, guys, it's fine. It destroys stuff. That's a gonna level 130 in this mission you won't see anything with higher EHP than that and again you don't necessarily need two shots to kill off these guys like so boom fantastic the more stacks you get the better off you'll be that's a single shot look at that 11 slashes boom dead All right you might want to hit him with a second round simply because you might have a necros and you want to do the double loot thing and all whatnot but that's pretty much all I can show you in steel path the weapon still performs very well as long as you don't have a trouble or the duplex trigger system doesn't bother you and the fact that it is at the end of the day a single target weapon now of course you can push the weapon even further than this if you so desire but for that you're gonna need a couple of warframe buffs so let's head on back to the simulacro Now here's something we can do, pick up Lady Mirage Prime and of course she gives the most powerful buffs but I know you guys want to see this thing crit or at least I think you want to see this thing create. So let's take Lord Harrow. Lord, oh yeah, I was searching for Lord, my bad. Harrow. So we're gonna be getting ourselves a whole lot of crit on headshots, 50% on body shots, 200% on headshots. Now for Harrow, I'm gonna be using a standard old build. You guys can feel free to copy it, but it's not really all that relevant. Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets? Yeah, obviously. But honestly, it's not really 100% needed by any stretch of the imagination. If your build calls for, I don't know, rejuvenation or shield disruption, I don't even know what this does. Aerodynamic. Whatever, simply use the aura of your choosing. Arcanes, ha! More impactful. And even though we're using Harrow and we're gonna get 200% on headshot, still go for Avenger. I do highly recommend it. Then you get 245 plus the base 10. If you don't mod for anything, get how that one works. Yes, higher crit, fantastic. As for the second one, honestly, this you should have your armor or your energize or whatever else. It doesn't really matter all that much. We got more than enough raw damage on the table you don't need to go for something like arcane rage considering the two shots i wish we had like an arcane pistolero but for shotguns but i guess that would be broken now wouldn't it so what's wrong with broken anyway it was supposed to be fun d was supposed to be fun now if i get a critical chance from that guy okay from harrow that means i should drop something you know what i'm just gonna drop this I, no it's not smart for me to drop this i'll drop this fine critical damage with ravage which is prime there you go a whole lot of critical damage you got a critical chance from the other guy you're good to go as for companion buffs, two options. You either go with the Panzer Volpi Volpi, or you go for more critical chance from the Sentinel buff, of course, from the Fort Vigilante mods, the 20% chance to enhance critical from primary weapons. Doesn't really matter which way you go for. The advantage to the Sentinel trick is the fact that even if it dies, you are still gonna retain that buff and it's up 100% of the time. The advantage to the Volpa Phyla is the Vital Prox. You don't need to build Vital Prox. Then again, their Vital Prox from the Volpa Phyla are not entirely reliable 100% of the time. It's really up to you for this test. Since we're going crit, we're gonna go with a little Sentinel. They still haven't fixed the thing with the stuff. Mm. Cute, I guess. Now, wait, fashion, fashion is wrong. Let's make Priest Harrow. You guys familiar with my Priest Harrow? You should love it. This is my Priest Harrow, and it's gonna line up perfectly with that Tigris Prime fashion. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Warrior of the Light and all whatnot, which will spawn level maximum. Please, D, I'm still waiting on the level cap thing. Yes, yes, please, please, let me spawn level cap here so I can test stuff. Uh, unpause the target so they can hit me, and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. Hera, one of the most offensive support frames in the game. He even has an AoE build that does fantastically well in ESO. Let me know in the comment section down below if I should showcase it for you guys. I'm gonna activate Confidant. I'm gonna prevent a whole lot of damage. Save my entire team. Not one of them will even say, hey, thanks buddy. Not one of them. 
Now his second ability gives you fire rate as well as reload speed, which in the case of the Tigris Tigris Tigras Tigras Prime <laughs> Tigras Prime is gonna be fantastic now. Keep in mind if you go for body shot, you're not gonna get the full benefit of the crit. Go for hit oh, ah. <laughs> Red crits galore, my friends. Duplex trigger system. Now, of course, if I'm doing this, I gotta aim and take it slow and one by one. And I know what you're gonna say. Hey, bro, the Brahma would have already cleared <laughs> the Brahma. Yes, yes, the Brahma would have already cleared this, but that's not the goddamn point now, is it? This is, subjectively speaking, a whole lot more satisfying. And uh, considering the word from Tenocon, it is my suspicion that single target weapons will come back into play hopefully this year that is just my supposition okay don't quote me on that as you can see the weapon performs very well it can absolutely melt whatever stands before it my friends more than reasonable performance is it the go-to weapon that it once used to be no and that's not because the weapon lost a whole lot of power or anything of the sort that's because aoe weapons came into play and the aoe meta and power creep yeah es essentially everything's just a whole lot more powerful than the tigers used to be but for a single target weapon she definitely packs a serious punch and if you're into single target weapons check out the link in the cards right now for one of the best ones right now in warframe i still recommend this weapon even though it's not meta and it's not just full nostalgia, it definitely has its own unique feeling, and I recommend you give the Tigris Prime a spin. As always, my name is Blazer. thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You know what else you can drop there if you got a second? How about some content suggestions? Hey, I would like to see this and that and all whatnot. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.